TJ Hughes, and for the past few years, a couple of friends and I, we've been cooking up this fun, absurd, and charmingly unusual food art experience called Noor, Play With Your Food. And as you just saw, it's launching soon on PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Steam, and Epic Game Store on PC and Mac. Noor is a surreal food dream game full of vibrant colors and delectable beats to match your mood. Have you ever wanted to telekinesis your ramen into a ball, then toss it across the dinner table? No? Well, welcome to a brand new set of goals you never knew you had. Since I first announced Noor, my team and I have been building a rich world full of sound and color. Noor elevates playing with your food from a childhood faux pas to high art. We've been hard at work creating wild, immersive scenarios to stimulate your creativity and indulge your senses. You know what they say, a good chef keeps their tools sharp, a great chef casts a spell on the entire dish. Slice, squish, season, char, and paint your food using Noor's tools to prepare or impair your ingredients. And then crank up the ambiance by weaving a spell. And watch out for... Who's this? There's many easter eggs and deeper mechanics to discover. <laughs> Since we first announced Noor, we've created even more opportunities for play. Especially with the PS5 DualSense controller. Which gives you refined haptic feedback and lets you actually sing to your noodles. For real, this is so cool. Like, shout out to my team for coming up with this one. There's something so satisfying about being able to endlessly fling pancakes or rain sprinkles down onto a bathtub full of ice cream. After putting so much time and care into this game, I'm so excited to announce that Noor is coming out on September 12th, 2023. I really hope that you love it and that you have a super chill time playing and exploring these various moods of food, color, motion, texture, and scent. Nor is finally ready to serve up, piping hot, next month, not so soon. That game looks wild. And delicious. Uh, hey folks, I'm Nick. And I'm Melissa. Thank you for joining us today. We are the games publishing team here at Panic, which you might not even know about. Technically, Panic is older than Google, but for the longest time, we've only made Mac software. Somewhere along the way, we fell into games. We published Firewatch from Campo Santo. We published Untitled Goose Game from House House. We even made Playdate. Since then, we've been a bit quiet on the publishing front, but now we're ready to show you some of the new games we've got in the works and introduce some of the amazing developers that are making them. We've got a ton of things to show you. Panic likes publishing games that are beautiful, funny, evocative, things that might catch your eye whether you play games or not. So let's go, let's check out some games. Let's do it. This first game is something new that you might have gotten a sneak peek at during Gamescom's opening night live. Check it out. Come on down, Joe, what do you... Peas. Not quite peas, not quite beans, but something special in between. Give your wife the best. Give her Big Ron's big pies. Oh, 
Gonna see the back of you, you wee melon head. Good morning, gamers. I'm Will. And I'm James. And we're. Carl Supper. From Yorkshire. Which is where you'll be going in our new game. Thank, Thank goodness, goodness you're here. here. So, what kind of game is it? Is it like Tetris? Or Dripping? That's a good question, James. Thank goodness you're here is an action comedy experience where you play as a salesman stranded in a strange northern English town. The townsfolk have lots of funny jobs for you to do, and there's some twists and turns along the way. But how did you make it? On, On the, the computer. computer. But where did you make it? On the computer. But why did you make it? Hey, that must have been a lot of fun to make, eh, boys? That's a good question, James. No. Thank goodness you're here. Comes to computers and consoles in 2024. We look forward to seeing you then. Good night, gamers. That beautiful hand-drawn animation, I can't get over it. Amazing. What are you even doing in that game? Well, you know, you're slapping things, you're milking things, you're going down chimneys, exploring a world, laughing a lot. It's the world's first comedy slap former from Cole Supper, launching next year. Now for something that is equally magical, but in a totally different way. We announced Despelote a few months ago, this really amazing first-person soccer adventure with a really unique visual style that's about growing up in Ecuador. But we wanted to take you behind the scenes a little bit, talk about what inspired it, and show you how it actually plays, courtesy of the developers. So take it away, fellas. Despelote, it's sort of a play on words. Pelota means ball. And despelote is sort of a saying people have that's like, esto es un despelote, that means like, this is a mess. And like, you play as a kid, kicking a ball around and causing a mess and like being mischievous around this park. Hola, me llamo Julián y soy el programador y, y diseñador de Despelote. Hola, mi nombre es Sebastián Balbuena y estoy a cargo del arte en Despelote. Eh, se incluye la animación 2D, modelado 3D y también la música. Despelote is a game about the culture of soccer. From the perspective of a kid uh, growing up in Ecuador in the early 2000s. It's a slice of life adventure game set in Quito, Ecuador in 2001, when Ecuador was really close to qualifying to the World Cup for the first time. So Ecuador had a major economic crisis in 1999. This was a very troubled and difficult time, but also a time of hope for a lot of people here. And there was, I think, a very important moment in Ecuador's recent history that doesn't get talked about as much. Because I think the, the soccer team had a really big impact in the whole country. Like it definitely went past the boundaries of the sport. And it gave the country a lot of hope. And you see this through the eyes of an eight-year-old kid who is just kicking a ball around uh, with his friends in the park. Despelote is a first-person game. It focuses a lot on exploration and doing mischief and having fun. And it talks about memory and childhood. I grew up playing a lot of soccer and it was always a big part of my life, I think. And Ecuador and Latin America is just a big part of life. You can't avoid it. I always really liked it, and then I came to the U.S., I came to New York, and because it's not as big culturally, I sort of took, took a step back from it. And then a few years later, I started thinking, like, what, what was the role soccer had in my life? And I was just, like, interested in trying to understand what soccer had meant to me. And I was like, okay, I'm going to make a game to try to answer that question. So you're kicking a ball around, you play as a kid, and this ball is very physical, it's reacting to you, but... You're never playing a full soccer match. It's more like you're exploring this park and playing with your friends and being mischievous. And then the park is full of all of these characters that are just going about their day in the park. Like some people are having picnics or people walking their dogs. And you can sort of interact with everybody through the soccer ball. They're all having their own conversations. And the idea is that as you're kicking a ball around, you're sort of absorbing everything that's around you. The story sort of follows every match in the qualifying process for the World Cup that Ecuador was playing. Like th that's happening in the background and there is um, some like loose narrative elements that are inspired by my own life. And the parents are played by my own parents, so you have moments with them. Ian, the sound designer, came with me to Ecuador and we 
talked with all my friends and family, and we presented these situations for them and then let them improvise. We really wanted to create this sense of space. I felt like the best way to do that was not to like just write all these conversations, but like talk to people like friends and family who like remember this time and see what they could bring in from their memories. The style of this pelote uses a combination of 2D hand-drawn characters and 3D backgrounds, which are based on real photographs. We used a lot of photo reference from real places here in Quito, and for some specific parts we also used 3D scanning. I think it was very important for us to use real places as like the base for everything, so he goes and like takes pictures of certain locations and then models them in a very low poly way. It's not like a one-to-one -one recreation of Quito. It's a memory that we're all putting together of this particular time. All the hand-drawn elements are interactable and they call out to you and they like stand out, they're black and white. And then the background is this fuzzy memory that we've been sort of putting together. And that's sort of what we're going through with this like grainy aesthetic. I think the game does a good job of, of showing this contrast between the world of a child and also the world of adults and all the problems and complexities that come with it. So this contrast of techniques and art styles really helps us to show that. In the game, it's been really important to like explore this like idea of childhood. There's part of it where you're like really understanding what the limits of the world are. And I think through kicking a ball around, sometimes it's really fun and like you're playing with people and all the other kids are really excited and you're passing the ball back and forth and that's like really fun. But then you kick it at this old guy who doesn't want to play and has no interest in soccer and then he gets really mad at you. And you're sort of like exploring those boundaries of like what is okay to do. And I think that boundary is also clear and like there's all this stuff sort of happening around you and all these people are having these conversations. You never fully hear the whole conversation, you're just hearing part of it and it's about like subjects that feel bigger than like what you can understand in the moment. The game tries to capture this feeling of being a kid and living in the world. Hopefully players will be able to like, feel transported into this moment in time and this specific space that is Quito in 2001. I hope that they lived uh, this pelote with the sense of having experienced a unique story that is not told very often and also that they have fun and they feel something with the game. We knew Des Pelote was something special from the first moments we played it and it's coming together beautifully. Really happy for that team. It was part of the Tribeca Interactive Show this summer. Really well deserved. As an archery enthusiast, I was delighted when I saw this next game for the first time. And now we finally get to introduce it, introduce the team, and show you all the very first trailer for Arco. Hi, I'm Frank from Poland. And I'm Max from Australia. Hola, ¿qué tal? Soy Antonio Oribe, también conocido como Fire. Hola, buenas. Soy José Ramón García, eh, también conocido como Viviki. And together, for the last two years, we've been making Arco, an adventure game with a new take on a turn-based combat. Y en el proyecto de Arco, ayudé como soporte en programación, game design y en escribir también. Y soy el compositor y diseñador sonoro de Arco. The story in Arco follows characters from various tribes that find a common enemy in the Red Company, an organization that's killing the land and its people. 
Each character has to decide how far they will go to achieve their goal and what can be justified in the name of the greater good, revenge or glory. I like to think Arco isn't just about each character that you play as, but rather about the world itself. To achieve their goals, characters journey through varied and vast landscapes, learn powerful magic, explore winding dungeons, make deals with demons and fight deadly battles. Arco blends elements of western genre with magical realism. You'll be presented with choices throughout the game, for which there isn't always a clear answer. This feeds into Arco's guild system, which represents the decline in characters' mental and emotional well-being as their quest presses them to make choices in different shades of grey. If you need an important item from someone, for example, you can choose to do something they ask of you, or you can simply choose to kill them and take it. Those choices will come back to haunt you though, as guilt manifests as angry spirits during combat. The combat system offers a twist on a turn-based tactics. You can see the enemy's expected moves and plan all your actions accordingly. Everything then results in real time. This means that you get some breathing room, even in messy combat situations. Each party member and enemy has different abilities, so there are strengths and weaknesses to play to and exploit. I love where we're at with how the game looks and sounds. Jose poured his heart and soul into the soundtrack. It's more extensive than for any other title I've worked on. It's like 90% of the file size at this point. Yeah, the amount of quality music is actually insane. It gave me additional motivation to keep the art quality up to par. The pixel art has also been a huge undertaking. Every location is its own canvas. Every encounter is its own canvas. All painstakingly detailed by Frenic. Sometimes a bit too detailed. That said, developing the visual side of Arco was extremely fun. Designing the architecture for each nation, thinking about the various flora growing in each biome, animals inhabiting the world, or any other little details, was a blast to work with, and hopefully that translates to your experience when you play it. Arco will be available on PC early next year. Please wishlist it on Steam and keep an eye on our social channels for news and updates. Espero lo disfruten. Thanks heaps for checking it out. Ciao. Ciao. I really love that we have a lot of variety in this lineup. Yeah, and it's such a cool twist on the classic Western genre, making it about vengeance against colonialism. Pixel art just mwah. And it'll be out next year too. 2024 is going to be busy. Really busy, uh, but life is short, so let's publish a bunch of weird video games while we can. Speaking of life being short, you may have seen this next game before, but we're really psyched to come on board as the publisher. Yeah, let's see a brand new trailer for Time Flies. My name is Michal Frey. You might know my work from games such as Kits or Plug and Play. Now I'm working on a new project called Time Flies. It's a collaboration with programmer Rafael Munoz. In Time Flies, you play as a fly. You get a bucket list of things to do before you die. But the list is long and life is short. You can learn an instrument, get rich, read a book, get drunk, or just make someone smile. And if you decide to not pursue your life goals, you just hang, clean your wings, you listen to music, or you watch television. I hope you enjoy. Hey, Cable, I thought you only showed up in Playdate videos. Oh, that's true, traditionally. However, I like to talk a lot, so I just kind of barged in here, and I'm wondering if I can be allowed to announce a cool thing. The floor is yours. Uh, yes, that's what I wanted to hear. Okay, so this next thing is not a game yet. It will be eventually. It's just too early to really show. But what I can announce now is a partnership that we are all super excited about. We've teamed up with the developers who made the Far series of games, Lone Sails and Changing yes. Tides. So good. Those games are stunning and lonely and elegant and thoughtful and have great music. They're, they're masterpieces. If you have not played those games, please do. But that team is now working on something brand new. And yes, we are going to help it exist. Yeah, let's say a quick hello to Okamotive. 
Hey, we are Don, Isa and Fabio from Okomotive and we are very happy to be working on a new project together with Panic. This time we are telling a new story outside of the Far Universe. In our largest game to date, we are exploring original gameplay mechanics to let you experience a new fantastic adventure. Here's a little sneak peek into our new game. A world full of wonder and adventure. Everybody on the team is having a lot of fun working on the project and we can't wait to show you more. Didn't you say we weren't going to show again? We did not show it, that was just a teaser. No. no, don't worry about it. So we will have a lot more to show on that partnership in the future. So that's it, right? That's all the things? Yes. That is it, Alyssa, that is it. Are you sure? No, I am not, I'm lying for dramatic effect. There is in fact one more thing. Hello, we're House House. Uh, you might remember us from when we made a game about a goose a few years ago. Uh, we're just here today to say that we're working with Panic again on a new game. Uh, it's something totally new, totally different. Uh, we hope you like it. Doesn't have a name yet, but I reckon we'll, we'll figure that out. That'll be fine. Uh, yeah, that's all from us. See you later. Bye. Thank you, House House. We are so thrilled and frankly honored to be working with you again on your next thing. And man, that thing is okay, like okay, basically- Okay, let's, let's call it there. No, I'm trying to say uh, what it is, That's plenty man. for today. We've announced a lot of things. It's frustrating. Anyways, it is gonna be super special. So uh, stay tuned for more information. Thanks so much to all of our developers and thanks to you all for watching today. We'll see you next time. Yep, see you next time. Are you going to PAX West in early September? Stop by our new Panic booth, say hello, and be one of the first people on the planet to play some of the games you just saw. Booth 1917 in the brand new Summit Building. See you there! And do you want to be the first to know about new Panic games, sales, and secret things? Don't rely on questionable, unstable social media! Sign up for the Panic Video Games mailing list at elist.panic.com, and we'll send you email the moment there's something important. Join the club!